Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Lakeshore Qualifier in Wisconsin, checking in team number 16460. Gearheads, the team, if you didn't catch them, by the way, we're on the FTC Top 25 in December. An absolutely phenomenal team. You've got to take a look at how they do their intake process. Absolutely phenomenal. Of course, we'll cover their slides uh, and also uh, cover uh, some of their uh, programming functions and features as well, too. And Gearheads, phenomenal team. Can't wait to see what this robot unveils here and, of course, through the rest of the season coming up here on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SolidWorks is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SolidWorks to design great products. SolidWorks can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com first to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Let's start on your robot uh, with your intake. You guys have generated an absolutely incredible intake this year, uh, able to orient cones in any direction. Talk about how you came up with the concept and all the steps and processes that go into it. Yeah, so every season we start off with big goals for our robot and what we want it to be able to do. One of the biggest goals this season was that we wanted to be able to intake cones laying down on the field or standing up in any orientation. The first step of the intake starts with the roller system on top. It's multi-purpose, so when there's a stack of five cones, it allows us to bring the stack down so then we can intake like normal. So to intake like normal, Josh, you want to show the... It rollers down, the rollers roll down, and it knocks the cone into the two rollers here. These wheels, or these sets of wheels, allow and push up the cone into the intake base. So as the cone comes up these rollers, these have springs so that it can maintain constant pressure with the cone. Then, once it's inside the base of the robot, it hugs onto this 3D printed part, which is essentially like a mimicked cone on the bottom of the robot. So the cone sits perfectly in the exact same position every single time. Then to complete the top of the cone so it hugs and can't bounce around, we use this gripper system. This gripper, it comes down onto the robot and completes the other half of the funnel so it can't bounce around. And then the color sensor inside here senses once the blue or red cone is in there and it brings the cone out automatically. Next, we use our gripper like here. It's actually a very traditional gripper, but what makes this intake unique is that it can intake from any position in any orientation, and it almost never fails. Talk to me about like, I mean, this is many processes I've gone through, right? You got many steps to get to where you're going. Uh, when you're looking at it, we had you guys on Robot in 30 Hours. When you're looking at going from there to where you are now, talk to me about how you got to that process to determine, hey, this is a route like your heads wants to go. Yeah, so the robot in 30 hours, if you ever saw our robot, it was a basic claw bot that had a claw and would lift up. There were three main issues with it. Number one, it was slow. Number two, it can't pick up the cones that are knocked down on the floor. And number three, it's very top heavy. So with this design, what it allows us to do is one, pick up cones in any orientation, which was one of our goals. And then two, do it very extremely like fast. So these rollers, this roller, and this roller on top, when the cone's getting pushed by three big systems, it has nowhere to go but straight in in a quick fashion. And then to fix the top heavy part, Thomas can tell you all about our lift system. All right, so uh, our lift system, so for our lift system, we use uh, three pairs of linear slides for the lift and, oh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, it, it can extend all the way up to each of the three levels of the cone and it doesn't get too far away from the robot. But what we do is when it grabs the cone, it's, all, it's, it's still in the down position and it ha keeps the cone nice and low and centered on the ground so it doesn't, it doesn't have to worry about tipping at all. And once we get in position close to one of the, t close to one of the terminals, then well, what we can do is we can lift it up and the robot's heavy enough that it won't wobble at all and it, it has a nice and strong and sturdy little base that doesn't shake. And it, it'll just lift up and we can use, uh, we can use slow movement to sort of guide the cone into the correct place and we can then uh, drop it wherever we want. Let's wrap up with some motion profile in your robot, talking about what's gone in from your uh, code perspectives, what makes it unique, and uh, I'd love to just hear more about what's gone into it. Oh yeah, sure. So our main use of trapezoidal motion profiling was on the lift to make it smoother and eliminate unwanted acceleration. So we determine the maximum acceleration and velocity it can handle, which also lets us optimize the times for extending and retracting. Uh, as you can see here, you need really synchronized motion on these servos to keep it from hitting the other parts of the robot. So we also use motion profiling on the servos so we know their position at any given time. 
How have you improved that process uh, from uh, the beginning of the season to your uh, competition here? Uh, so at the beginning of the season, we just used a uh, run to position with the motor encoders. And uh, that was somewhat uncontrolled because we didn't know where it would be. And uh, we had to limit the power on the original robot arm to half because it was too jerky. So this has allowed us to put full power into our arm and get as low, low cycle times as we can. And looking at the future as well, too, you guys already had a great performance. Uh, what are you looking at improving from a programming standpoint on your robot as you look at future events? Oh, uh, sure. So there's recently been a question on the forums in which knocking over the stack has been sort of ruled illegal. We don't know yet. So in the future, we hope to have a cycle autonomous based on this front gripper. So grab it in the front and turn around. Well, Gearheads, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your robot. Congratulations on great performance so far. Of course, wish you best of luck here at this competition, but really looking forward to see what you bring the states and beyond. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.